All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. All right, Mike Peterson four two four eight has a uh, a very uh, good request. I appreciate the comment, and let me read it. He says, "I feel uneasy regarding prayer. A lot of times, Father and Jesus are used as being two different things. It should not be confusing." Some simplifying and clarity would be most helpful. Ty, thank you. All right, so um, let's try to make this real easy. Okay, first of all, let's establish the fact that there is one God. All right, one God. All right, we'll just go with this. We can go with anything, really. Um, well, no, actually, I'll go back to that. I apologize. I'm going to go back to that. I want to go... I want to start off in Exodus. And I don't want to start off there. Okay. How about we go back... <laughs> I apologize. I'm just... I'm winging it. I wing it every video. I just wing it. Okay, so let's go to Exodus 20. All right, and then consider the Ten Commandments and the very first commandment. And the very first commandment is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now consider that, okay? There, there are no other gods. There's only one God. And you read here in verse 2, I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. All right, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So there's one God. One God. And that we, we have to establish that as absolute fact. In my opinion, it's very, very important. Um, so if we go to, I'll go here. Right, let's go. Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God. Seeing it is one God, okay? But to us there is but one God. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all in, in you all. For there's one God, I want to go back to that, thou believest that thou, there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Now, in 1 Timothy 2, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Alright, so, um, how, okay, so look, we establish that there's one God, alright? So now let's establish Jesus, who Jesus is. All right, and let's go to Revelation 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. All right, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is in which was in which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washes from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, 
which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty now this is very important in my opinion very very important to understand Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 it is Jesus that says I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the ending which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty Jesus is Almighty God all right very important and this is um, paralleled with what we read in Isaiah um, chapter oh I'm, I'm gonna guess if I had to guess chapter 9 let's see how far off I am let's see if I'm even remotely close here yep there it is okay uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father the Prince of Peace now this is speaking of Jesus no question about it he shall be called the mighty God now remember Exodus 20 verse 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me so there's only one God and it's Jesus okay even here in Revelation 1 uh, verse 8 um, the Almighty okay and then of course we could refer to uh, we can go to uh, before Abraham was I am before Abraham was I am and this is in reference to um, when uh, in the Old Testament when uh, when uh, it was Abraham I can't remember now um, when he says uh, who should I say that you are or whatever when he's asking God and he's like oh I can't remember I can't remember nothing um, oh no I'm not gonna be able to find it I'm not gonna be able to find it but anyways uh, he says uh, I don't know how to see even I don't know I don't know I don't remember I apologize for this I don't remember but basically uh, basically he says I am I am I am has sent me unto you and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say, or I'm sorry, thou, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. All right, it was Exodus 3. I was way off. Okay, but anyways, the point still stands. I'm wrong. God's always right. Remember that. So, um, Jesus is is the Lord God Almighty so when God said unto Moses it was Jesus all right and then of course uh, uh, great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh without controversy okay there's no question about it great is the mystery of godliness God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory <clears throat> all right so it's a great mystery no question about it so let's go to 
Matthew 6. And when Jesus uh, gives us uh, instructions on how we should pray. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Alright, so when you consider this prayer, consider um, this, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In the name of the Father is Jesus. Right. That's so important. So important. So, so important. So important. So let's go to Acts chapter 4. And starting at verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only by the name of Jesus. There is no other name for the Father which art in heaven. All right, and then also, uh, you know, you pr you've probably heard or I've heard in my in my experience, uh, people say, "Well, I pray all this in the name of Jesus, uh, our Father which art in heaven." So. I, I think early on, uh, there was, in my experience, there was some confusion. There's the Father, and then there's Jesus. Well, the, the Father and Jesus is the same. They are equal, and they are the same. Jesus, now let me sort of uh, give you uh, my understanding, I guess, if you will. Uh, so... This might not be so easy, but Jesus is in heaven right now, all right? So a thousand, two thousand years ago, he was manifest in the flesh. He was in our body, okay? All right, so there's, it's important to make a distinction because he was in our body this is different than right now with him in heaven and it is different than in the resurrection all right so this body that we're all in is temporary but God has come into this temporary body and he has done the works of God for us and he has led the way for us and so that we that are his will follow him and he has died resurrected from the dead ascended to heaven and so also are we destined for that path all right so there's in one respect there's uh looking at him in that sort of manner of him being um, manifest in the flesh and him being the mediator between God and man alright 
he is the only way. All right, so to me, there's that aspect of it. And then there's just the aspect of where he's at right now in heaven. And um, he's re going to return for us. Now, there's also the other aspect of it, and that is if I were to uh, give an example, I, I, I would use water as the example. So water comes in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. So Jesus being the representative of, uh, I don't know how to, well, I just pick one, I guess, uh, the solid. Right? And so, because he has come into our flesh, and he has done the works of God, and he has ascended to heaven. And then there is the aspect of gas, which I guess you could equate to the Holy Spirit. And so, the Holy Spirit uh, is the Spirit of God, and... Um, those of us that are born of God, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And then the water, um, I would equate to uh, everlasting life. The flowing waters, the, the waters that spring up into everlasting life. Uh, the waters that carry us. You know, that's, I don't know if that's real good analogy there but uh, that's how I would look at it there, so it's a great mystery no question about it but we ought to never think that there are two gods and that's ridiculous you so we established at the very beginning that there's only one God all right so um, having said all that yeah I, I again it, it's really um, I guess in my opinion that it's something we can't really wrap our head around until the time comes we can't really fully understand and know God and all that God does until the time comes we can't if we could then we would be God and there would be no need for God but we can't. We're limited. We're very limited. Um, so that's how I sort of relate all these uh, passages that we're reading, and that's how I. That's how I would. Uh, that's that's my mentality, I guess. Um, the way I look at Father and Jesus. There's Jesus is the Father. Okay, but um, when you consider. Uh, you know him in heaven and then consider when he was in the flesh and the works that he has done and the example he has provided for us it's not two different people it's just, it's God it's not two gods it's one God yeah I get it it's it's not I don't know if I'd say it's confusing it's just amazing and it really it, it gives us something to look forward to uh, because we're gonna we're gonna be shown things that we can't even imagine we're gonna have understanding that we could never know in this life it could be confusing if you I guess overthink it you know what I mean there are some things we just can't know. You know, with uh, absolute understanding. Okay. If we could know everything that God knows, then we would be God and believe you, me. We're not God. Okay. We that are born of God, 
we do have God in us. The Spirit of God is in us. The Spirit of God dwells in us, and we in the Spirit of God. Right? So we are one with God, and then we will be uh, raised and transformed, changed, when the Lord God, Jesus Christ, returns and we will be clothed with an incorruptible, immortal body and uh, we will be given uh, power and riches beyond our wildest dreams. Alright? And no man will rule over another man. Alright? So it's going to be greater than really what we can even imagine right now so we got a lot to look forward to no question about it and uh, so um, I think that's it I think that's it just uh, I like the idea of keeping it simple and so the simplest way, really, is uh, just to understand what we're able to understand, and that there's one God, and it's Jesus. No question about it. Okay, thanks, Mike Peterson. Uh, give me some feedback and uh, share your thoughts with me. I, I appreciate it. Thank you.